What's going on guys? It's Cameron from Tinker's Musings here. Today we're going to be talking about how to cool my garage and what did I do to get there. We'll talk about purchasing the AC, repairs, and results. So without further ado, let's get started. At the beginning of the summertime, it was really hot here in Georgia. So I was looking for a way to cool the garage. Sometimes the garage temperature would get up to upwards of 105 to even 110 degrees. And this is just way too hot for electronics. You don't want anything to be going that hot and for extended periods of time. Because that's when stuff fails, when you lose hard drives, you lose uh, valuable and expensive equipment. Because I'm sure you've got quite the investment, or at least somewhat of an investment, in your home server, home lab. I know I do, and I don't want to have to replace a majority of my hardware or hard drives. So I, I looked for a cooling solution that would be within my budget and would allow me to do cooling of the server rack without having to modify the garage terribly. So this is where I settled on a portable AC, and more specifically a dual hose unit, which is more efficient than a single hose unit. And the gist between dual hose versus single hose is that a single hose only cools the room with the existing air that's in the room, whereas a dual hose actually takes air from outside and cools that and puts that back into the room. We're not having to drop the temperature of the room while cooling the room. We can actually take the air from it outside and cool that air, and that is used to cool the room. Both units, one hose or two hose, will actually do the same exhaust with the condenser exhaust fan to the outside. You absolutely need that to go outside so that you don't have hot air coming back in. And when you do this installation, you need to make sure that both hoses are far enough apart so that you don't actually reintroduce hot air back to your garage. Now, this is the unit that I bought. It, this is actually an Amazon listing. I don't have the original Facebook Marketplace listing anymore. Unfortunately, that, that was taken down pretty early after I picked it up. But uh, basically, I bought a somewhat working... I mean, it, it cooled. I did verify, but the condenser fan was broken. And, you know, the listing said that it was actually the compressor fan. Wrong wording. But basically, the, the condenser piece is the hot end of the air conditioner and something had fallen down inside the unit and broken the blades. This caused wobble and friction, and it would also kind of cause the unit to sound really, really loud because of the friction and the wobble. So let's see if, if we can fix this. Let's see if I can fix it and if it, we can make it work. Does it do the job that I bought it for? All right, let's take a look. All right, so today I'm attempting to fix an air conditioner. This is a portable air conditioner. It's um, 14,000 BTU, plenty to cool this space. Um, I found it a, a good deal on the Facebook Marketplace for like 200 bucks. There was a small problem. Uh, they, the owner said that basically this fan assembly would rattle and create a lot of noise. Uh, I, I did have to take this unit all the way apart in order to get to this fan assembly, but that's okay. Uh, it was like maybe half an hour of work to get down to this, and that's because I've only done this the first time. If I were to have to service this again, I would basically be in a good space for um, doing something like this. Well, it's not 100% quiet, but Coming out the top, we can I can feel cool air for sure, so it is cooling. Um, the exhaust fan is working, so lots of hot air coming out. I mean, I, that's what I expect with 14,000 BTU. I don't need this to be 100% quiet. I just don't want it to be like super, like woodpecker loud. So I had this almost all put back together, but then I realized that there was a problem when something fell into this fan a while back, it actually broke one of the blades. 
and then uh, this was just lopsided. So my hope is that by removing the, the little edge here, that it's going to not be lopsided. I don't know if I'm gonna to have to remove every other blade to offset for this one, hopefully not, because that would be less efficient on the fan. Maybe there's a replacement part I can get for this particular unit, but that's where I'm at. Hopefully it will be solved once I remove the last bit of this trim. Okay, so, so as a last ditch effort, I just kind of cut the blades off in half because I couldn't separate the fan for now. I feel like this motor is good. I just need to get a new fan assembly. So that's like 40 bucks and uh, hopefully that, that'll solve this. Well, <clears throat> sometimes calls for extreme measures. I know that my soldering iron is not the greatest tool for this, but I don't really have any other hot element. Uh, so I've got the old fan at least cut off. Now I just need to remove the bolt from the motor then I should be able to put the new fan assembly on top. I'm hoping that doesn't take much longer. So no matter what I tried, I could not remove the plastic or the previous metal piece from the old motor. So I just got a new motor because I wasn't sure about the condition of the this one. And I, I wanted to make sure that I covered the full repair and didn't skip anything because it would be a shame to put everything back together and have this be the part that failed. But now everything's working well. All right guys, well I have just replaced the fan with the replacement part and I also got everything put back together. Um, it's much, much quieter. I think this will do. So now it's time to put it back together. With the thermostat set lower, I should actually feel this side getting cold. And it's not currently getting cold. I actually remember that not long ago when I was first diagnosing, something popped and I smelled something as well directly after that. And I have a feeling that it's this compressor capacitor, this guy right here. I ordered a replacement part. It's not quite here yet. I'm actually waiting for it today. So I just popped this front panel off, which provides easy access to this capacitor. One thing to note about this capacitor is high voltage and uh, you really should be careful when handling. So make sure not to shock yourself. Also, going around to this side, I don't feel anything moving around here, so probably my diagnosis with the bad compressor capacitor is, is correct. But that was only like a 10, maybe $13 part. So once that's replaced, we should have a, the whole refrigeration system is working. So we have cool air coming out of the top. It's difficult to tell with the ambient temperature being so low, but I definitely remember feeling frigid air coming out of this when I first tested it. Alright, so after a long time troubleshooting here, we finally have the compressor turning on. It's getting pretty warm there, so careful to, when you touch that kind of thing. These pipes, these heat pipes are going to be very, very hot. If you're servicing your own AC, never touch them with your bare fingers. It's gonna be super hot, because out of this, out of here, we're, we're getting really hot, hot air right now. So let's be careful when we are dealing with AC. This is the cool side, this is the evaporator, this is the condenser. And the condenser is what gets hot uh, when the compressor kicks in. So I would call this thing a wrap and I'm going to get the cover back on and we're going to get it hooked up into the garage. So, what got this to work was readjusting some of the wires. I looked back at some of my pictures and uh, I had that bottom red wire with the right angle kind of up the, at this top terminal 
and it wasn't connected to anything. Um, so once I moved that around, the capacitor actually kicked back in and it was able to get the compressor started. So we don't have a broken compressor. We have, I was about to send it to an AC repairman actually. And I actually bought a second capacitor that's a little bit thicker diameter. So I do have a spare capacitor if this one does die out, but it will need to be, this will need to be modified a little bit to fit. But always take a picture of the wiring. Whenever you get started with something like this, make sure that the wiring is respected. And that's, that's it. That's it, folks. We did it. I had some crude pictures. Not really great angles, so I kind of had to take my best guess. And eventually, through enough trial and error and finagling, I got the condenser to turn back on, and it started blowing cold air. I put the shroud back on, then I was able to get... Well, at that point, I had put the condenser fan back in place, because that can't be detached but it was pretty much back together except for the outer shell and it was blowing cold air and it was quiet i had achieved what i set out to do and uh was pretty happy with with that accomplishment it only cost me 127 dollars extra in parts yes i had to spend some of my time to fix it but i would say that's definitely worth it I was keeping a spreadsheet to, you know, have the product pages. If you do this kind of repair yourself, you can go check out your AC model number and see about replacement parts because sometimes these are just sitting on shelves or sometimes they, they get units that are sold for parts and then they break them down. They have these used parts or they even have new OEM parts. The condenser motor and the condenser blower wheel were brand new parts, as well as the caster wheels. Nothing special with the caster wheels, it's pretty much your standard caster. But condenser motor and the blower wheel, those are very, very custom parts. Yeah, here's your standard caster wheels. I think I probably could have gotten that from Office Depot, for example, but I just ordered them all from this from pretty much the same place. I couldn't get the motor from this company. Uh, I got one from Sylvain, and you know it's sixty dollars, and they actually shipped from Roswell, which is like right across town from me. So they were very quick. I had these parts come in within a few days of ordering them, and then by the next weekend, I was pretty much ready to get back to it and get these parts installed and fix it. All said and done, $127.85 for the parts, and then I was able to get a working air conditioner out of this. Would I recommend this? If you think you can take the risk then, and you want to learn something, sure. But if you want a unit that just works, then maybe go for a used unit that is more like $400, right? So that you don't have to go through the hassle of the repairs. I wasn't sure what I was getting into when I first started this, but I learned a lot through the process, so I don't regret any of it. That'll do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and if you liked it, please hit like and subscribe, and leave comments down below, and remember to hit that bell icon so you can know when the next video comes out. Thank you so much. See you next time.